What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. Uh, today was an interesting day, to say the least. But I'm going to say the best thing that could happen for the Cowboys is the fact that people are booing Stephen Jones. You know, a few weeks ago when we lost, and it just seems like it was, oh, God, it, it was the worst thing in the world, losing to Green Bay. I've been calling on my brethren out there, all of the YouTubers that are Cowboys Nation, to continue to keep on the pressure against the Joneses to let them know that we're we're not going to take it anymore. We're, we're sick and tired of the same old bullshit, and it seems like we're still getting the same thing. I love the fact that people were booing Stephen Jones. I hope it goes on like a regular. Let them know that we are not happy with the crap that we're hearing from them. You know, we got all excited for a minute that Jerry, you know, we're all in. And then to hear Stephen Jones say, I don't know a time when we haven't been all in. Bro, 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 keep booing that mother humper. Boo him. Boo him like crazy. So we got that. We learned yesterday that Leighton Van Der Esch has another neck injury. Uh, yeah. My thoughts are, are we beginning to see a rebuild of the Dallas Cowboys? That we're looking at this and saying it's time to get rid of the old guys and things and time to start over. Start the clock now with everybody on one-year shots. You know, let's go through. Let's fix things. Let's go through the growing pains and go from that point. Because in the end, what this, I think, boils down to is the Cowboys probably lowballed Tyron Smith thinking that he just wanted to end his career as a Cowboy, but understanding that this is, you know, the last couple of years and maybe the last contract that he gets that his agent has put out feelers and knows that he can get more money elsewhere than the Cowboys. And that's why he's going to go. It's nothing personal. It's only business. And this is the thing that uh, Demario Davis taught me was you have to understand there is no loyalty. People are always saying, you know, you know, the, this team drafted you and, you know, you've been a part of that organization. He's like, listen. Uh, that's not the way it works. They may have drafted you. They may like you when they can do stuff for you. But when it becomes that you start slowing down or you start costing too much and they got somebody else who can do the job better, you become expendable. And when they're done with you, they're done with you. So, yeah, that's where we are with Tyron Smith. You know, and if they can do that to Tony Dorsett, if they can do that to Emmett Smith, you know they can do it to Demarcus Ware. They can do that to anyone. So that's why you go out and you make your money. You go out and you make your money. So now the question is on the Cowboys offensive line. We were already in flux last year and actually the last couple of years because Tyron Smith, it's been hit or miss. You know, the year before, he only played a couple of games down the stretch at right tackle because he ended up having his hamstring literally ripped off the bone. And we've had other injuries throughout Dak Prescott's whole career. The last time Tyron Smith made it through a whole season, I believe, was 2015. So, now the question is, do we leave Tyler Smith at guard and try and draft a left tackle? Do we look on the roster and say we got a left tackle that can take up the slack? We know it's not a go to because he's a free agent and let that mother humper go. We should have known when the Jets were willing to get rid of him that there was nothing redeemable about him. I think the best bet for the Cowboys is this. You move Tyler Smith, who you originally drafted to say he's the heir apparent to Tyron Smith. You move him to left tackle. He's got experience in playing that position. He's got two years under his belt. For him, he knows that as a left tackle as opposed to left guard, he's going to make a lot more money, a lot more money. So that's the incentive for him to be there. And you can see him being a great guard. 
He's got the size and strength to play tackle. And here's the thing going into the draft. In the draft, there are certain positions. The Cowboys always like to, in the first round, draft the highest uh, prospect in a position. So the thing is, is we know there's probably the first three picks are going to be quarterbacks. Probably be another pick or two of quarterbacks, you know, before the top 15. So if you're late in the draft and you're trying to get a quarterback, you're getting, you know, way down the line. You know, edge rushers, there's a premium. You know, three or four of those guys will go. Left tackles, you know, three or four of those guys will go before you. Wide receivers, you know, two or three of those guys will go. Guards, not so much. So if you're looking to try and get the best prospect at a position, guard and definitely center would be the places that you would find the biggest bang for the buck. And so what you may look at, or what the Cowboys, as we sit here today, may look at their starting offensive line with Tyler Smith at left tackle, TJ Bass maybe at guard, or if you draft a guy, uh, Brock Hoffman at center, if you don't draft a center, Zach Martin and Tyler Smith. With Zach Martin being the elder statesman, the thing that's crazy to me is that Zach Martin, I remember being at the Pro Bowl when it was in Arizona. And I guess that was 2014. And I remember being, God, uh, being the luckiest man alive. Because we had, oh my God, we had so many pro bowlers. I was walking behind Tony Romo, and you had DeMarco Murray right to his left, a step behind. You had Jason Witten over there. We had L.P. Lossaman, who was outside. We had Zach Martin, Travis Frederick, and Tyron Smith all walking in front of me. And I took a picture of that. And to look at that now and to know that only Zach Martin is left from there, wow. And that he is now the elder statesman on the offensive line, um, it's kind of crazy. But I think that that's probably what we're looking at, at at the moment is that's the lineup, and then they'll see what they can find in free agency and or in the draft. Now, if you feel comfortable with that, then maybe you can use that pick elsewhere as opposed to offensive line. Maybe you're looking at defensive line. But ultimately, if we are talking about all-in, and I know we're not talking about all-in because if we were talking about all-in, we'd actually be making some moves to be in a position to grab some extra players, but we haven't even gotten under the salary cap yet. Legal tampering starts a week from tomorrow. And we have not created, no, actually, we created more bills. We went from $9.5 million over the cap to 10 and a half. So there's that. All right, good people. I'm going to put some varnish on this top over here. And then I'm going to spend some time. I'm going to watch a movie with my wife and stuff. And just kind of chill out before we leave tomorrow to get back on that bathroom up in Harrisburg. All right, good people, I appreciate you, and as always, peace out.